So I was at Lord's Cricket Ground today, the home of cricket, the finest stadium for any sport in the world with the longest and finest history. And I was there to witness a masterclass. England's Johnny Bairstow displayed his poise, his strength, his discipline and dexterity in a world-class performance that thrilled supporters from both sides and won plaudits across the globe. And for those viewing in the United States, worried at this stage this show may all be about cricket, you might be relieved to know it had nothing to do with the actual game. And someone invaded the pitch, Terry Alderman did his shoulder in. Besto just waving to the dressing room. Maybe it's his gear. <laughs> Tremendous stuff. Uh, Johnny then turfed him over the railing at the end like a piece of rubbish, which is exactly what he should have done. Well, three just up oil protesters rushed the pitch, dead set on ruining the test match that they've as they've ruined so many other national events in the last year or so, uh, they were arrested. Groundsmen scrubbed their orange powder, which fortunately wasn't put on the pitch itself, or it could have wrecked the play for the entire day. So play was able to resume after just 20 minutes. Anyone who knows of cricket will tell you that a spot of light drizzle in a neighbouring village could suspend a test match longer than that. So the joke in the end was on them. But what's most impressive about this spectacle is that in one fell swoop, Johnny Bairstow triumphed where countless police officers and irritated bystanders have failed. Let's take a look at an action replay. On come the protesters with their orange powder and their t-shirts determined to wreck things. But no, there's no stop the oil. There's just this, lift and shift. The Indian wicket keeper ferrying off the protester pathetically like he's an ironing board and dumping him like a garbage sack to use the American vernacular when he gets to the end. I was there cheering on Johnny Bairstow and indeed the England captain, Ben Stokes, who also apprehended one of the protesters and some of the Australian players did too. There was a, a general feeling in the ground, I have to say, from every player and every spectator, we're just done with these clowns. We're done with them. They are spoiled little brats, attention-seeking. Nobody cares anymore about the message because they're always listening. We've all just grown not just weary but angry at the Just Stop Oil protesters constantly causing chaos for chaos's sake, wrecking things that the rest of us enjoy, or just going about our normal lives. They've blocked roads. They've thrown soup over priceless artworks. They've trashed the Chelsea Flower Show. They've bolted themselves to the goalposts at a Premier League football match. they wrecked the World Snooker Championship. We've all seen this stuff and just put up with it, because it's the British way, isn't it? Just let these people do this because they're protesters. But the solution was staring us in the face all along. It was Johnny Bairstow. And the serious point here is that these protests have now become completely self-defeating. Many people back the principle of their cause, but not one single person at Laws Today or at any of the things that they've been doing this stuff at have turned around afterwards and gone, you know what? They've really got a point, these people, and I must join their protest. After seeing them throw paint on the pitch of the test match, I'm not racing to be behind Just Stop Oil. I'm racing to loathe and detest them for wrecking a day that I love. Even one of this movement's founding fathers has now come round to my way of thinking about this. Trevor Nielsen has spent a fortune funding climate action groups like Just Stop Oil. Now, in an interview at the weekend, he said this, it's disruption for the sake of disruption. Working people that are trying to get to their job, get their kid dropped off at school, survive a brutal cost of living crisis in the UK. Having a pink head tattooed and pierced protesters standing in front of their car so that their kid is late for their test that day, that doesn't encourage them to join the movement. It's just performative. It's not accomplishing anything. I absolutely believe it's now become counterproductive. That's the guy who's been helping to fund Just Stop Oil saying exactly what I and many others have been saying. Just Stop Oil should change their main, their main to stop being utter prats. Well, joining me now is environmental campaigner, Donica McCarthy, Just Stop Oil spokesperson, uh, Chloe Naldret, and the former England uh, test cricket legend, Sir Geoffrey Boycott. So welcome to all of you. Uh, you. Well, let me start with Chloe, Chloe Naldret. Uh, Chloe, even the people who were funding you even the millionaires behind a lot of this stuff, they're sick of it. They're sick of the performative stuff, the attention-seeking, the wrecking of stuff that other people enjoy. 
They recognise none of it is turning anyone's opinion. Uh, they're as sick of it as I am. Why do you all keep doing this? Well, thanks for having me on today, Pierce. Um, what you've just done, beautiful summary of the actions that we've been doing over the last year, of course, has looked a lot at how we protest, but you haven't mentioned a word about why. Why is it that a bunch of really ordinary, community-minded, uh, law-abiding people are taking this kind of action? And the answer is because we're in a climate emergency and our government is not taking it seriously. This action at Lords today isn't the biggest climate story of the day. The biggest climate story of the day is the fact that the government's own climate change committee, which is headed by the Conservative peer Lord Devon, has found that the government's net zero strategy is failing on every single one of its targets. That means they're not keeping us safe now and they Great. are not so you keeping know what, us Chloe, safe in the future. You know what, come on shows like this and debate that. I'll invite you on to have a proper debate uh, about uh, that. Invite us on, my message we'll to you, come on any time, but, but my the message reality to you is, is the listen, only way we get on is to by your, doing these no, actions. No, it's not the only way you get on. That's a complete myth. There have been regular debates on shows like mine that don't involve a reaction to the kind of ridiculous nonsense we saw today. The truth is, you've become a group of wreckers. You just like wrecking things for the sake of wrecking. Nobody is coming along why to your cause it, why because of these stupid stunts. Pierce. We all think you're a bunch of puerile, spoilt brats who are just going out of their way to cause other people inconvenience and ruin their fun. That is the reality. Well, you might well have serious... Well, hang on, let me finish. You might well... Opinion. Hang on. You might well have a serious point to make or many serious points to make. I might well agree with some of those points. I probably do. But you know what? The more of these things you do are things that I enjoy and my friends enjoy and my family enjoys and other people with their friends and families enjoy, the more families that you stop in getting to work or getting their kids to school for important exams or getting to funerals or whatever it may be, the more you do that, the more we hate you and the more we don't want to have anything to do with you or give you a platform to talk about the stuff that actually is more important, as you rightly say. Why don't you just stop the stupid stunts? Stop wrecking because people's this won't get, lives. This won't stay in the news and it won't stay in the conversation. And perhaps what we're doing by interrupting the things that you need to do that are important to you, that you love, is we're making you think about everything that no, we're standing not. to No, you're not. You're making me think you're a Lord bunch De of morons. Lord Deben said today... You're not, Chloe. Lord Deben said Chloe, today... Chloe, you're not making me think about your cause. Now, Nobody at Lords well, today was thinking, you God, you know what? It, this Pierce. is about climate change. We saw the orange powder, the whole crowd started booing, and fortunately... England's wicketkeeper, Johnny Are you Bairstow. going to let me talk? Uh, actually, no, I'm going to cut Are you, you off. I'm going, to go to, I'm going to go to Sir Geoffrey Boycott. Geoffrey, um, you're a cricket yes, legend. Yes, yes. You know, I remember back in the 70s, a pitch being dug up at Headingley, uh, which wrecked a, a test mm. match in a different kind of protest. But this, this series of attacks on stuff that most Britons just like watching, the snooker, the cricket, the Chelsea Flower Show... What do you make of it? Does it convince you that you should take this kind of thing seriously? No, I watched it today and I just started laughing. I thought the England players did well and with the Aussie batsmen, they made a barrier at one end for one of them so they couldn't get through and then the, uh, the staff came on and grabbed him, one rugby tackled him. Johnny picked up the other one and the orange powder, it actually went on the ground about eight or nine, ten yards away from the pitch. Yeah. So it didn't do any damage whatsoever. And I just laughed. I thought it was foolish. I, I just thought it was stupid. There's a, a serious point to this, uh, Geoffrey, which is that have they actually got to the wicket itself? You know, these wickets yeah. in a test match at Lords on day one of a five-day match, yep. they're pretty sacred piece, pieces of land, right? If they got there and begun to do actual damage to the wicket, sprayed their paint everywhere, actually it could have wrecked the entire test match. Yes, and everybody's got tickets for tomorrow, Saturday, whatever, whatever day. All the refunding, their, their absolute few days of the cricket would be spoiled. That's what happened with the George Davies. That's what it was in 75. It was uh, some people got in through the night. They didn't have security guards then or, or dogs, you know, through the night to stop that. And they dug up the pitch and they painted it. And it was all about freeing George Davies, yeah. who was in jail at the time. They supposedly thought he was wrongly put in jail. Uh, and. When Tony Gregg and Ian Chappell, the two captains, were walking up, come to the ground early because there's been a problem, Greggy was smart enough to say to Ian Chappell, 
can we cut a fresh pitch for you and we play on that? Chappell yeah. said, whoa, we're not stupid. Because as you know, and any cricket lover mm. knows, these pitches that they actually bat on have been prepared and rolled and made flat and pancake so that you get a fairly true bounce. If you play on a freshly mown pitch, the ball zips all over of the course. place and Australia would have lost. So the, whole so the match was abandoned. Yeah, that's right, it was. And, and the whole... In the whole integrity of an of a international cricket match, say the Ashes like this, is reliant on the pitch and the integrity of that pitch. That's yes. why it may look yes. like a puerile stunt. Actually, if they got to where they were trying to get to, and who knows what they had planned for when they got on the wicket, they could have wrecked the Lord's Test match. And I come back again, Geoffrey, to this sense that I have that the British public are not getting moved one iota to support this cause, the more that they do this kind of thing to stuff that we all enjoy. Well, if they'd have got to the pitch and ruined it in some way, then there might have been hell on. They might not have got out of the ground in one piece. That's not to say that's right, but people would have been angry that the game was ruined and ruined for the next few days. I mean, this is an ashes. There isn't anything bigger in cricket and there isn't a ground better in the world than Lords, the mecca of cricket. Yeah. So it wouldn't have gone down well, and I felt at the time. That's why I laughed. I thought, this is silly. This is negative. This is not going to do you any good mm. because the people are across. They're going to be mad as hell if you ruin it.